It is 7 p.m. at Westport Special Town Meeting. Please come to order. And would everyone please rise and join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance Thank you and welcome. Um, before we address the warrant, I'm going to go through the usual introductory stuff. I'm sometimes tempted to shorten that when we have what looks like it might be a little briefer town meeting, but out of fairness to those who haven't been here before, I'm going to go all the way through it. If you've heard it before, here it comes again. Um, <clears throat> My name is Stephen Force. I'm the town moderator. I chair the meeting and decide questions of order. I'm going to take a few minutes to explain how the meeting works. Town meeting is a gathering of the willing registered voters of the town to act as a legislature to decide on the items set out in the warrant. The warrant is a list prepared by the Board of Selectmen of the matters that we will act upon in this meeting. We will act on everything in the warrant. We will not act on anything that is not in the warrant. The individual um, warrant items are called articles. We will address the warrant articles one by one. The procedure begins with me reading the article or a summary of it. An article poses a question. I will then ask for a motion, which is a suggested answer to that question or possibly a suggestion that we not answer the question at all. These are usually prepared in advance so that we have proper legalese. We then follow the tradition of asking for a second, um, so we know at least two people in the hall are in favor of what's being proposed. We then get a recommendation from the Finance Committee. Then we begin, then we follow with discussion, which you are all invited to participate in. And then when we've completed discussion, we vote. We operate under a set of rules that will be enforced politely but firmly. The purpose of our rules is to allow us to complete our business in an efficient, orderly way, identifying and acting on the will of the majority, while respecting the minority and always showing appropriate respect for our neighbors. And while the rules are many, they are summed up in these four concepts. We are polite, we deal with one thing at a time, no one gets an unfair advantage, and we move it along as quickly as we can without sacrificing one through three. The authorities for our rules are our town bylaws, a fascinating book called Town Meeting Time, our traditions, and my judgment. If you choose to participate in discussion, um, I would ask you to step to one of the microphones. Please wait to be recognized or given the floor by me. Um, please state your name, and please speak only to the question before the meeting at the time. And another uh, important rule, we do not allow personal speech, so we ask you not to speak about anyone else by name. The artful speaker sit mentions the previous speaker or a previous speaker rather than using the person's name. Certainly rude and disrespectful speech cannot be tolerated. While everyone can speak as many times as they like, no one may speak for a second time until everyone who wants their first chance has had it. We enforce a five minute time limit on speech from the floor and that will be enforced. I will warn you at four minutes that you are a minute away from your time being up and I will ask you to, to stop speaking at the end of five minutes. Um, a 10 minute time limit is allowed for presentations prepared in advance of which we will have a couple tonight. Um, as I said, a motion is a proposed answer to the question that the warrant article um, presents. Um, and it may be that you feel like you would like the answer to be a little different than the one that was originally proposed. So you're welcome to step to a microphone and propose an amendment. However, the, if the amendment is more than a change in a word or two or a number, something we can all easily understand verbally, I would ask you to put it in writing and bring it up here and uh, whisper to me and hand it to me. To make your decisions, about the questions in front of you tonight, you may need to ask questions of some people to gather more information. Um, we have kind of an awkward procedure for this, um, but it is meant to avoid arguments flying back and forth across the room. So if you have a question, all questions are through the moderator. So say you wanted to ask a question of town council, you would say, Mr. Moderator, I have a question for town council. I would say to you, what is your question? You would give me the question. I would turn to town council and I would pass the question on to him. He would answer me and I would return and I would ask you if that answer was adequate. So I'm going to ask you not to speak directly back and forth with uh, others. And to those who answer questions, I would ask you to please simply answer the question. It might be, if it's a yes or no answer, 
to just say yes or no. Because if you then begin to editorialize, you're getting extra time that is really not fair to the rest of the folks in the hall. There are two circumstances in which you may interrupt a speaker. The first is a point of order, and that would be um, if you feel like I am conducting the proceedings incorrectly, violating one of our rules. Um, that has happened before, and it will certainly happen again. And I welcome your help if it does happen. If it does, please stand, step to a microphone and say, Mr. Moderator, I rise to a point of order, or just point of order. I'll ask you what your point of order is. If I agree with you, we will modify the proceedings accordingly. Um, if I don't, we won't. Um, the other is a point of privilege, and that is anything that interferes with your ability to participate effectively in the meeting. If you can't hear me, if you can't hear a speaker, if people around you are making noise that makes it hard for you to hear or participate, please say, Mr. Moderator, point of privilege, and we will address that situation so that you can participate fully. And then lastly, um, while there are all kinds of rules here, um, if you have a question, just ask. This meeting's for you and your benefit, not for us to demonstrate outstanding adherence to the rules. Um, if you step outside one of the rules, I will simply tell you that you're outside the rule and ask you to step back within again. So let us flex our voting muscles with a procedural motion here. I'm going to ask if someone pr would please offer us a motion that this meeting dispense with the reading of the warrant and of the constable's return of service of that warrant and that the moderator not be required to read articles verbatim, but may refer to them by number and subject matter. A so moved. With we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor will please say aye. aye. Those opposed? That is carried unanimously. And that is how we do it. Article 1, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds the sum of $60,000 or any other sum for the design, project oversight, and replacement of the Westport Briggs Road Fire Station <coughs> group, including all expenses in incidental and related thereto, or to take under action relative thereto, sponsored by the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Carrero, will you offer a motion, please? Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $60,000 for the design, project, oversight, and replacement of the Westport Briggs Road Fire Station roof, including all expenses incidental and related thereto. Is there a second? A motion a second. May I have the Finance Committee recommendation, please? The Finance Committee has voted to unanimously recommend Article 1. Is there any discussion? Ms. Loth? <coughs> Jane Loth, living on Main Road. Is it on? Can people hear her? Thank you. Yes, no? Yes. Okay, L how's this? Better, good. I'd like to know where this particular uh, investment stands within the capital improvement plan and why it was not covered six months ago. Is there, would you like to address that question to someone in particular or shall I just seek a volunteer to answer it? Is there a volunteer to answer that question? Mr. King? Yes, when we reviewed the projects, it, th this project had been on the, uh, had been requested by the fire chief uh, for a couple of years. Uh, the chief at last year uh, was based up because of the finance of the town, thought that he could get through another year with the existing roof. Uh, unfortunately, the roof sprung a leak and, uh, and we find it necessary to expedite the replacement of the roof. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion under Article 1 will please say aye. 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 Those opposed? That is carried unanimously. Article 2, see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds the sum of $65,000 for the purpose of funding a contract with a consultant to assist and otherwise advise the treasurer with regard to the operation of the treasurer's office, including any necessary and related costs and expenses related thereto, or to take any other action related thereto, sponsored by the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Carrero, will you offer some motion, please? Mr. Moderator, I move the town raise and appropriate the sum of 65000 for the purpose of funding a contract with a consultant to assist and otherwise advise the treasurer with regard to the operation of the treasurer's office, including any necessary and related costs and expenses related thereto. I have a motion and a second. May I have the Finance Committee recommendation? Mr. Moderator, the Finance Committee has voted to unanimously recommend Article 2. Um, and Mr. Carrero, you will uh, begin discussion with a presentation? Yes.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for showing up tonight. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator, for having us. Uh, we have a presentation to, to show everyone on the screen here, and um, we're just going to go slide by slide uh, and take this one step at a time to um, uh, go through each, each uh, point that we have up on the screen. So uh, we'll start with the first slide. Uh, we want to we want to um, accomplish three things here tonight. We want to let the uh, voter know in in town meeting here that uh, what what's occurred, what we're asking for, and what this is going to get us. And um, uh, the first uh, slide demonstrates the um, what we call as a crisis in the treasurer's office. Uh, certain um, items that weren't uh, processed or should be processed uh, in a timely fashion were not done. Uh, so, the, um, which reciprocates into um, management findings through our outside auditors, which we engage in uh, every uh, uh, year. They come in and they uh, audit the books. Uh, they audit the processes that we go through in the, in the, in the finance department, be it accounting, uh, treasury, collections. Um, and also, uh, it uh, led to a couple of, uh, a, a letter from the Department of Revenue, Division of Local Services, which oversees municipal, uh, city, uh, municipal um, government cities and towns uh, that was not so favorable. Uh, so those two instances uh, had the Finance Committee in conjunction with the Board of Selectmen try to get this moving forward. This has been a, long, a lengthy process uh, to, um, to, to get this uh, on track, if you will, and get us to the point where we are tonight to ask for the sum of money to get us moving forward. Um, the handouts that were at the uh, table out front are the, basically the, uh, the uh, uh, management letter for both 16 and 17 and the letter from the Division of Local Services. We're not going to go line by line and, and paragraph by paragraph, but you could read those and uh, those were up on uh, our website to uh, discuss um, anything uh, that was related to these issues that we're, we're dealing with now in the Treasurer's Office. Uh, you can go to the next screen. So, um, these are some of the issues that led up to the point where we are now. Uh, backlog and daily activities, um, the uh, segregation of duties uh, within departments. Uh, you have the uh, uh, account, town accountant that should be dealing with certain items. Uh, you have the treasurer, and those two functions can really never be commingled. Uh, the, um, there was concerns about the, uh, now we're, we're looking at uh, major debt for the uh, police station and for uh, the schools. As you know, that's been approved. Uh, the treasurer is responsible for the uh, bonding of those. Uh, so there was some um, concerns with that. Uh, payroll deduction information, uh, there was uh, some issues where things were reported late. Uh, and um, we we'll switch over to the right side. Uh, we looked at some of the issues that have been ongoing. The uh, treasurer is um, elected with uh, no municipal experience. Uh, bank reconciliations, as we mentioned uh, before. Uh, became material weakness within both of the audits that we that we uh, dealt with, um, and uh, OPED, uh, which is the other uh, other post employment benefits, were um, were uh, wrongly uh, ve uh, booked onto the onto the uh, onto the ledgers, uh, and uh, it's it it caused an underestimated value of a hundred uh, hundred thousand dollars. So these are some of the issues that we we found in the research that we did over the past couple of years. To get to this point, uh, the main the main keys uh, the main two uh, issues that we, we see that as the most uh, detrimental to get this resolved is uh, the unreconciled bank accounts for 17 months, um, and these are pointed out in the audits uh, and within the DLS Division of Local Services letter that we've we've handed out, and um, the other component of this is free cash is at risk. As you know, we use free cash to develop our budget. Uh, we use it for uh, capital plan, uh, and um, that I have no confidence in this uh, fiscal year that we'll be using free cash to develop the budget. Because of the process that we need to go through, we need to have, and this slide shows, basically we had this up on the, um, when we presented for the uh, fiscal uh, 19 budget, we showed the flow of free cash within the, within the budget process. So as I just mentioned, the Finance Committee has no uh, real uh, you know, we're not confident that we're going to be able to use free cash this year because the process is we have the auditors in, they uh, then, um, uh, well, let me back up. We, we have the Department of Revenue in, they certify free cash. But what's happened in the past is the Department of Revenue Division of Local Services has asked that we have the audit done first before we can 
uh, certify free cash. So we're now in December. Uh, we don't have that process in place yet. If we were to get the consultant, if you would approve that tonight, we would get the consultant in, get that process done, get the DOR to certify free cash, but then we may be out sometime in uh, you know, uh, May or June. We will be well beyond town meeting. Uh, so th that's the reason why we don't feel confident that's going to happen this year, even with the approval of this tonight. So uh, our recommendations, as, as mentioned, we, we went through uh, numerous meetings with the treasurer uh, and with, the, consu with the, um, the consultant that we're looking to bring on board. We had meetings with him. Uh, they need immediate assistance. It's not, this is not something that we can put off any longer. Uh, there is so much that's tied into the office that, that it, it's cyclical. I mean, it, it, there's things that need to be done because other things wait on that process. And we talk, about the, we talk about the risks if, in fact, we always wonder, well, what if the article doesn't pass uh, and what those repercussions will be? Uh, as mentioned, free cash won't be certified. We continue to have bank accounts not reconciled. Uh, the DOR will now, uh, the, um, they'll consider us a high-risk auditee. There'll be, there'll be additional funds to get the audit done. Uh, and um, you have a material weakness on the books. And now that we're borrowing in additional amounts for school, we could see uh, with a, a, maybe a downgrade on a, on a bond rating, uh, additional interest that we have to pay uh, unnecessarily. Uh, and uh, uh, the big piece in the bottom there, you can see it, is the, uh, the non-distribution of local aid, which is very, very severe. If in fact the DOR, and they've done this in other towns, I mean, this has happened in, in communities where not only processes of the treasurer's office, but other processes that may fall apart don't get done, they have every right to hold back our state aid. And that means state aid to the schools, highway, and everything that comes up on our uh, cherry sheet. So we just reiterate the article. Um, you know, we, we want to get back on track. We want to put this train back on the tracks. We, 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 we're looking forward. We're not, we're looking that the consultant will bring in some expertise, some templates, some best policies and practices for the office and hopefully that the, uh, uh, that office will be able to pick up the baton and move forward and uh, get us out of the situation that we're in right now. Uh, but it is crucial, and um, the committee has taken the, the uh, and along with the Board of Selectmen, have taken the approach that this needs to be done, and uh, this is why we're here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Carrero. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Moderator. Uh, Ms. Schufeld. Uh, it's the position of the Board of Selectmen that we unanimously support this article. Um, this question is my own, though, and not on behalf of the Board. Through you to the Treasurer, I have two questions. One, uh, does the Treasurer support um, the funding of this article? Why or why not? And two, what actions has the Treasurer been taking to date to uh, minimize the need for this. Mr. Brightman, would you be willing to give us answers to those questions? Mr. Moderator, may I speak in general? Uh, at this point, you would simply be responding to a question, so I'd ask you to give us a uh, yes or no as to whether you support this. Um, and then I believe- I absolutely question. support this. And the other and question that, would be uh, what, what actions you have taken to minimize the need for this. We're moving ahead on this to stream, get this process streamlined, and we have every confidence that it will be done in the time and manner in which it needs to be done. I have talked to the consultant, and uh, he, he is with us tonight in case there's any technical questions, but uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Schufeld, anything further? I don't believe he answered my second question. So my second question uh, to the treasurer through you is what actions has the treasurer's office been taken to mitigate or to remediate the need for this or to mitigate or make this less? And um, what's, what actions are they taking now? Mr. Brightman, can you offer us a, you're not required to answer that, but we'd appreciate it if you would. We've been moving uh, on the direct uh, procedures that we need to do to keep the office up to date as much as possible uh, with 
what we can do. And also, we've hired, uh, we now have a full staff, and I'm confident with this current full staff that we'll be able to accomplish that mission. It's really a team goal. Okay, but, but the, the, the question right now is yeah. the actions that you have taken to minimize the need for this. And is there anything further along that line? I think just in general that we, we've been moving forward with everything that we, we can do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Um, Ms. Chase. My name is Lucy Chase. I've lived in town for over 30 years. I live on- I, I don't believe, is, is this microphone on? Will you speak again? Hello? No? Can you hear me now? Better? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Lucy Chase. Um, I live on River Road. I am a reluctant speaker at this town um, meeting, but I am just filled with outrage and just want to have my 30 seconds worth of explaining that. I just think that for this situation to have arisen, we are all at blame, all of you people up there, all of us here who have elected someone who cannot be dismissed because he was elected, but clearly. Um, I, I, I'm gonna interrupt you for just a second and, and let you continue, but I, I, one of our roles is we speak to the question before us, and the question before us is, shall we or shall we not appropriate $65,000 to, to um, do what we need to do with the treasurer's office? Um, so I would ask you to make sure that what you're saying relates to whether we should or should not do that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and I am supporting and I'm going to vote for this, but I am still just filled with outrage at this failing of our town. And I would urge the Board of Selectmen to consider figuring out how to make a bylaw that if someone is elected who clearly cannot put us in this position, that they need to, we need to have a bylaw so that someone okay, can Okay, I'm sorry, that is not addressing the question before us. That was what I was trying to avoid. I understand. Um, so I would ask you to come back to reasons why we should or should not appropriate $65,000. This is all the time I will take. I just felt I had to speak. Thank you. <laughs> Ma'am, I believe you were next. My name is Amy Lawton. I live on Hicks Ridge Road and I've had a career in accounting. My questions are, I have several questions. I would like to know more about this consulting firm before I sign up for $65,000 worth of investment. I'd like to know who they are, how they were selected, what other consulting firms were selected, and I would like to know what their plan of action is. I'd like somebody from that consulting firm to say what we will get for $65,000 and will we be able to certify our free cash in time for the uh, annual town meeting, which is very important. So I'd like to okay. get those um, questions answered. I like to think I'm pretty good at following people's questions and passing them on, but there was a lot to unpack there. Okay. <laughs> can, so can you, can you tell one, me what, what like questions to, you would like I'd to I'd like pass? to know the identity of the consulting firm. Consulting firm, okay. How, how, shall, how shall they we maybe were do selected. These, shall we maybe do these one at a time? Um, so the, um, and I believe that the, the consultant is seated right behind you. If okay. you wouldn't mind stepping up and answer these questions for us one at a time and again, um, just, yeah, just an can, answer to the question, please. Maybe I can answer some okay. of that too as okay. well. There was an RFP put just, out. Just, just, just the question right now is the name of the consulting firm. The name of the uh, consultant firm is Eric Kinshoff, CPA. Thank you. Okay, so and what is your next question, ma'am? Uh, I wanted to know how this consulting firm was, was selected and what other um, consulting firms were, were, were considered? considered. Okay, thank you. Mr. Brightman, will you? There were um, three consultant firms considered, an RFP was put out, and Eric Kinshoff was the successful uh, bidder. Thank you. Does, does that answer your question adequately? Who were the others? Uh, um, will you please step to, to the microphone so we can? Who 
were the other consultants that were considered. Uh, Mr. Brightman, can you tell us who the other two consulting firms were that were considered? Um, um, one was in Lakeville. Okay. I can't uh, remember and, and, the names. If you, if you cannot, you I, can't. I can't recall okay. the names. Okay. I'm sorry. Ma'am, uh, your next question. I want to know what the consultant's plan for um, action is and what we're going to get for the $65,000. Sir, please identify yourself. Hi, um, my name is Eric Kinchereff. I have a municipal co consulting firm. Um, I've had it for like 10 years. And as far as the plan of action goes, I mean, we've done this in a lot of other towns and to reconcile. So the plan of action is as follows. Yeah, the last audit was June 30th, 2017. I get the cash audit work paper from the auditor, have the bank balance, all the reconciling items matched up. And then from there, we're gonna go month by month from July 2017 um, to September 2018. Um, we're gonna reconcile all the bank accounts. I'm gonna understand what the process is that they do now because um, there might be some, a lot of stuff that they're doing good and then we're, we're gonna put all the pieces together um, and we're gonna go month by month. And I'm gonna have like processes and procedures. The goal is not only to get the thing, get it reconciled so you don't have the management letter comment and so you, you can get to the DOR, but also leave you with processes and procedures that can be followed but going forward. And th so that's the plan. The end product is to do that um, so you can continue it on an ongoing basis, like a plan. And um, that's basically it. So my goal is not only to do the reconciliations, but in a year from now or two years from now, that you'd be following the processes that we've established, that it will automatically happen, you know, going forward. Because I feel like I didn't do my job unless it's. I don't want to solve it once, you, you know, the old saying, give a man a fish he eats for a day, teach him how to fish. So my goal is to teach. Can you speak under the microphone? I'm having a yeah. time here. Well, basically, I want to give you the tools to do it on an ongoing basis rather than just do it. And um, I used the, uh, um, you know, analogy when people said, you know, you give a man a fish he eats for a day, you teach him how to fish, they f eat for life. So my goal is to not only get the fish, get the reconciliation done, but also put processes and procedures in place where they can do it going forward by themselves. Right. Ma'am, does that adequately answer your question? Yes. Okay, you have, you have about 30 there seconds left there on was, your time. There oh. was one more question. Okay. One, the last question was, will the $65,000 get us to the point where we can get our free cash certified in time for the annual town meeting to get things appropriated? Okay. Um, and. That, that sounds like a yes or no question, unless there's some vagary to it. I, would you answer that, please? Y yes, on, on the RFP that was bid on, it says 90 days. Okay, the if, the answer, if the answer is yes, thank yes. you very much. Good. Um, Mr. Dutra? Oh, okay, thank you. Mr. Sullivan? I appreciate that. I couldn't stand in line, so I appreciate uh, allowing me to, to sit while I was standing. I'll also ask if I have something to say, if I... I believe it relates well, to Would you me. identify yourself first, please? I'm sorry. Thanks. You said Mr. Sullivan, and I thought everyone knew. I was Michael Sullivan, uh, Drift Road in Westport. Anything else? I don't have any. I don't okay, so the floor is the yours. The second part of what my request on a handicapped basis was if you do not interrupt me, that I believe what I'm going to say is relative to the question. And uh, I think I'd like to just be able to read it, okay? Well, I, I will not agree to that because if your speech violates our rules, I will interrupt you, as I do everybody else to keep it fair to everyone. Okay, well, I'm so just, um, I'm, I'm keep it, keep it within you, the uh, rules and you will not be interrupted. I haven't been able to be back in a while to the town meeting. I'm, I, my request is so rendered. Thank you. Uh, I do have something to say about Article 2, uh, which I really didn't know much about until I came into the cafeteria and there was uh, piles of, of DLS and, and management reports. Uh, in the past two days, I saw a little bit on different Facebook things on an account that I haven't been on for two or three years. Um, and it's just kind of interesting. It, it appears that 
Article II motion on our December 2018 town meeting is created quite a, f a, a, a furor, if you will, and um, without the kind of respect of, uh, of, of people and, and, and what they do for the town. Uh, so the only thing I wanted to point out, actually, that, that was my editorial, but I know I had plenty of time. I'm going to read from a 2011 uh, letter from the DLS. Uh, that's the uh, now, well, While you're pausing, I'm, I'm going to ask you, that Sorry. this is going to relate to why we should or should not appropriate $65,000 for this purpose, is it? because that's what we're discussing right now, and I have to, to be fair to the rest of the people in the hall, I'm, ask I'm, you to I, confine so what you're saying to your whether question? we should, I your first please question? do not interrupt me, um, confine what you're saying to whether we should or should not, and reasons why we should or should not um, appropriate $65,000. So please continue. Okay, thank you. I, I don't hear well either. Please, so please continue. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is related to Article 2 on tonight's motion. Uh, and it has to do with the subject matter which is uh, distributed at the front of the hall from the same agency that also sent a similar letter in 2011. If you're asking me, I do believe that that letter uh, for, for discussion, because that's what's been all over Facebook and things, I think we should look at that letter. It's gonna take me a few of my minutes to read it, if I could. As long as you can assure me it relates to whether we should or should not appropriate $65,000, please speak. So on March 24th, 2011, uh, addressed to the Board of Selectmen and uh, Town Hall, 816 Main Road, and it says, Dear Board Members, once again, this is from the same DLS that, that there's multiple piles of paper out and, and on your way in. You probably all got them if, if uh, which preempted this article. So I wanted to explain that, that that is the relativeness of what I'm saying. Why? Because that is what we're responding to. But back in 2011, there was, you know, they, they, they talk about a financial management review it was completed by, by request at that time, and they came up with some comments about the treasurer's office. Uh, and when I read it, I, I don't think there's, there's anything but this adds to a timeline of Article 2 uh, on tonight's motion. And it basically, what I can recap it is, it, it talks about what, what goes on in the Treasurer's Office, and then it talks about uh, soft right system. Uh, and it talks about an old style system uh, of, of a paper system without getting into it because it's uh, clearly available. I was able to get it this afternoon online. So what it talks about is, is elements of the soft right system should have been put in place between departments so that the, the financial team of the town, and I just wonder if that's one question as it relates to how I would vote on this is, is, if, is that soft right system? 30 seconds remaining. Well, I, that's my, my first question. I'll save those 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your question? My question was the soft right system that referred to the letter that I referenced, is it been implemented as, as was the uh, recommendation from DLS? Okay, is there a specific target for that question or may I just ask for a volunteer to answer it. The town administrator who was the, uh, which, uh, just a footnote, uh, uh, he, he was not the town administrator at that time. Okay, your, your, your time has expired at this point, but I'll pass on your no, question. I, 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 uh, Mr. King, 30. was was the uh, soft right system referenced in the 2011 letter implemented? No, it hasn't. Uh, okay. I know that the treasurer's office and the accountant's office is supposed to be working on a bridge between uh, the payroll system and the soft right system so that it would be much easier to reconcile certain accounts. Thank to you. To my knowledge, that hasn't been completed. Thank you. Um, and I'm getting a little nervous. I know I only I'm asked sorry, your, 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 your time, your five minutes has expired. You'd be welcome to speak again for a second time when everyone who wants to speak for the first time has had a chance. Mr. Dutra? 
Uh, Craig Dutra, Union Avenue. Um, I am voting uh, extremely reluctantly uh, for this. And, and I do that because um, I think that our town structure with respect to handling finances is, um, is flawed. Uh, that we are having people that are full-time paid uh, uh, elected employees uh, handling finances. We should have full-time full -time appointed town employees uh, handling those finances. Thank you. Sir, I believe you are next. <laughs> yes, Hen Henry Swan, uh, through you to anybody who can answer the question. Just approximately how much state aid is at risk if uh, we don't go through this process? Thank you. Mr. Carrero, can you offer an answer to that question, how much state aid is at risk? Well, that's um, really an unknown. Uh, the, d the Department of Revenue would determine at the point where they feel that state aid stops. And uh, state aid is reimbursed to the cities and towns on a monthly basis. It used to be quarterly, but they've gone monthly. At any point in time, the De Department of Revenue, Division of Local Services could could um, stop those payments. Uh, but, but I think he might be asking for a rough figure of, of oh, what's how, how much? Hundreds. Mr. Yeah. Mr. King, Mr. King? Hundreds Mr. King? Of, Mr. King? Hundreds Mr. of thousands. Mr. King? Yes. Would you be kind enough to answer that question? Yes, Thank sir. Thank you. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of dollars are at risk. Well, hun hundreds of thousands really doesn't really cut it, I don't think. but. Are we talking 100,000 a month, or what, what are we talking so, about there? So we, we would like to get some rough number per month that, that monthly aid constitutes, or that state aid constitutes. Mr. King, can you give us a rough monthly estimate? What will, what will happen, I believe, how much do we receive quarterly, Terry? Uh, Mr. King, I'm going to ask you to please cooperate with my no, request that I'm you don't sorry. speak to other I can't people directly the in the hall. So. Um, would the town accountant be willing to tell us? You can simply tell me and I'll pass it on to the meeting. Um, a, a rough estimate of what we receive monthly in state aid. Okay, so we get approximately five to six million dollars a year, so that would be in the neighborhood of 45 to 50 thousand dollars a month. Well, uh, no. I. Oh, well, uh, don't trust my math. Uh, right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Five million dollars is the satisfactory answer okay, as far you. as I'm concerned. Frankly, I don't think anybody here is enthused about voting for this uh, motion, but in view of what is at risk, I will vote uh, for it, and I would certainly urge everybody else in the room to vote in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ryden? Uh, Tanya Ryden, uh, Fallon Drive. Um, I've uh, certainly been convinced um, of the necessity of this as a uh, sort of a Band-Aid, uh, but I'm not c um, confident of the long-term uh, solution is uh, in front of us. Uh, this does not seem adequate um, to a crisis that has been building for many years, and I'm wondering why it's taken so long and what is the long-term plan for solving this? Because I do not sense that there's um, an adequate solution, but I understand that we need to do this in the short term. So it, would you like to ask a um, particular I, person? Sure, I, I'll what? direct that towards the Board of Selection, uh, Board of Selectmen, what their long-term plan is. Ms. Shufa, would you answer that for us? It's our hope that during the course of this implementation of this contract that we support, that processes and procedures will be put in place in that office to allow it to function more smoothly. I, the, I think any other, I, I think you, I would welcome input from the treasurer on how he sees that impacting uh, long term. Um. So I, I directed your question as you, as you wished. Um, would you like it directed elsewhere or uh, another question? Uh, or? Uh, well, I would uh, pick up on the point of I, you hope this will be adequate. H hope is a fine thing, but it doesn't feel um, 
uh, l like a strong vote of confidence that we will be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm, I'm, what I'm asking for is what other uh, backstops do we have to um, ensure that this problem gets resolved in the long term because this seems inadequate. Um, before passing on that question, I, I, I want to acknowledge that lots of people have strong feelings about this whole situation um, and that the situation may be larger than a $65,000 appropriation, but what town meeting does, what we are doing here is trying to decide if we're going to appropriate $65,000. Um, the other things that people are bringing up are valid issues, but, but if they don't relate to, to that, this is not the forum for them. And I know that may be frustrating, but town meeting acts on the articles before it. And I'm trying to avoid this going into a much larger discussion about things over which town meeting has no control and also avoiding it becoming personal in any way. So um, with that, um, wh what would you like to do going forward? Would you I'll close my comments with saying yes, I will support this article, but I would hope that the town uh, develop um, further strategies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brightman, I believe you are next because you have not actually spoken on your own time yet. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Brad Brightman, town treasurer. To the town, the current situation is my responsibility as treasurer of Westport. Band rep, you just tell you, you'd be welcome to turn that podium sideways and, oh. and, and, and well, I was only turn it that way you. so people could see the slides. Okay. It's, uh, it's more comfortable for you that way. As previously, previously stated by the Finance Committee, there are a lot of current issues that we are facing. The main issue is the bank reconciliation process. It is my goal tonight to explain a little bit how we got into this current state and how we wish to rectify the problem. I was born and raised in Westport and have lived here my entire life. My concern has always been for our town. Basic responsibilities of the treasurer's office, because I don't think you know exactly everything that it encompasses. Payroll processing, benefit administration, bill processing, account reconciliation, tax title, investments, bonding, which included the successful bonding of the police station, the first leg of the new school, septic betterments, general obligation bonds, agricultural preservation, bonding, cash management, deposits, customer, employee, retiree, services, planning and administration. Other town committees that the town the treasurer's representative on. History of staffing shortages. Prior to me being elected, the treasurer's office has been staffed by three individuals for at least over 10 years. I've been the treasurer since April of 2015, a little over three and a half years, approximately. The assistant treasurer resigned in March of 2016 for a new job. Upon notice, I immediately requested the selectmen to post the position to retire, rehire an assistant treasurer. My request at that time was denied and denied multiple times, even though we had the money budgeted for this position. This staff position remained unfilled for 18 months. I was finally allowed to rehire a replacement and a replacement was rehired in September of 17, as the auditor requested the position to be filled immediately upon the end of the 2016 fiscal year. Uh, obviously, we were running behind with operations even then. Furthermore, the clerk resigned in September of 2016, as she transferred to another position in the town. We were able to hire a replacement in December 2016, but I was pretty much alone in the office for approximately three months. You know, I Mr. Did Breitman, Mr. Breitman, I'm gonna interrupt you for a second because I have, I have asked other people to please try to confine their comments to <coughs> whether we should or should not right. appropriate $65,000. So I'm gonna ask you to make well, sure that, I think that, the, that you're stick to okay. 
speaking to why we should or should not. But I did have assistance, some, some assistance during that time with payroll and data, data entry. Even with new staffing problems continued, with a new clerk in December 16, we were still functioning with one person down for another nine months. We were treading water. Some of the items listed some in the management report, some of the mistakes in the finance committee report occurred during this time. A professional improvement plan was implemented to try to aid this new staff member. I probably should have replaced the staff member sooner, but the fear of being alone again running this office prohibited me. There are antiquated processes in this office. When I came to this office, it was probably good for the former treasurer, but many of the functions of the treasurer's office are performed manually. Can you think about doing that in your own professional office today? 30 seconds remaining. Okay. And have not been updated and computerized. This system may have worked, but it needs to be modernized and this will be part of the process of not only bringing us up to date, but modernizing us for the future and streamlining us. I plan on bringing a legacy to this department. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I recognize the next speaker, um, our attendance tonight is from Precinct A8, Precinct B67, Precinct C16, Precinct D25, Precinct E63, for a total of 179. And I'd also like to point out that we have yet to have anyone speak in opposition to this. So all are welcome to speak, but we may, may want to consider whether we're ready to vote on this. Um, Mr. Vieira. Mr. Moderator, my name is Antonio Vieira, and I rise in support of this uh, motion. I, I respect the uh, judgment of, of the Finance Committee and the hard work and the selectmen in recommending this. My only question um, in my support uh, my understanding is that the Mass Municipal Association has a three-year training program for treasurers, whether elected or appointed. They're uh, encouraged to participate in the three-year training program, and I'd like to know um, if we uh, took advantage of that, uh, and if we didn't, if we could still take advantage of it and possibly reduce the 65000 by doing so. So the question is, um, did, uh, did, did our treasurer attend the Mass Municipal Association treasurer training? And if not, can he going forward? If that, yes. Uh, Mr. Brightman, can you answer those questions for us? I have been attending well, the, the, the first. The first would be well, a yes or no. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. I have been attending the, uh, it's not Mass Municipal, it's Massachusetts Collectors and Treasurers Association School. And I have been attending that. I have now completed okay. most I'm of my classes. I'm going to ask you to confine it to his questions, which were, have you attended the Mass mm -hmm. Municipal Association training? Yep. Um, apparently the answer to that is no, although you've attended another one. And then, uh, and the other one is, if not, do, do you intend to attend the Mass Municipal Association training? Well, it's Mass Collectors and Treasurers. Okay. And yes, towards their yeah. certification program. The thing okay. about... Th thank you. Th thank you. I, I appreciate you answering the question, okay. but, uh, but as I requested earlier, I've asked people to answer questions. We appreciate the answers, but I ask you to just confine your comments to the answer. Mr. Vieira? The reason for the question, I was only uh, trying to see if we could reduce the 65000 by taking advantage of some state programs that are available, whether elected or appointed, for new people in those offices. That's all. Thank you. Um, Ma'am, I believe you were next, although correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Deborah Weaver, Drift Road. Uh, we didn't get one critical question answered earlier about who selected the consultant and what the team was that vetted those, that, this proposal. I'm very concerned about that because we're voting a lot of money and we have no idea who picked this company. So your question is who picked the, uh, the consultant and how were they vetted? Right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Schufeld? The selection process went through the procurement officer, which is Mr. King. Uh, myself, Brad Brightman, uh, Gary Carrero, and I believe Mary Sullivan uh, participated in interviewing the contractor. In addition, he's received some um, exceptional references. Does that answer your question adequately? Thank you. Ma'am? Abigail Test, River Road. Um, my question is um, 
what other towns has this consultant helped specifically? And how are they doing now? Have these um, problems that the other towns encountered been rectified? Okay, I'd be happy to pass on all. I would, I would wonder if you would have some criteria for how you would know if they were rectified, because that sounds like it would be a judgment call well, for someone. That, well, the letter here says um, material, I, I can't remember the term, material, the most serious uh, Right, so, so if they were removed from that status. Would so it, have they been, re, you know, reduced in status to oh, no problem? Their status normalized with that yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Mr. Brightman, can you offer us the names of some other towns and whether their status relative to the DOR has been normalized? <coughs> yes. Well, he just finished uh, in a, a wrap-up with the, the town of Bridgewater, but he, we have a list here that was part of his criteria of all the different towns. There's at least 14 right here. So, and it, uh, t whether it's the town of Easton, Marshfield, Carver, Braintree, Maynard, Sandwich, Newburyport, the Bonstable Fire District, City of Lowell, town of Worthington, town of Winchenden, town of Bridgewater, town of Weymouth, town of Halifax. And thank then it lists also the services that he performed well, and well, also thank you. the so what, what we're looking for is the names of the towns and then whether their status with the DOR was returned to normal. Sir? Okay. Um, the, what, one town that I can bring to mind that was in a tough spot was the town of Winchington. Um, they were on the DOR watch. They had a deficit bond. Um, uh, uh, but right. I'm, I'm going to ask you, ra rather than uh, okay, the, yes, the story yeah. of the town, we're looking for, uh, would, you, would you be satisfied with a couple of example sure. towns? Because I think yeah, it might be difficult for him to do all yeah, 14. Sure. Well, sure. Well, well, a general well, assessment yeah, right. that yeah, your yeah. services were produced the desired results. Sure. Town of Halifax, Massachusetts, town of Winchington, Massachusetts, and town of Hubbardston, Massachusetts. Were successfully we're, we're, we're su successful and still successful, and at the time that we started, they had issues. So, so their their status with the DOR has been normalized. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Anything further? Uh, just one more. That realistically speaking, these accounts can be reconciled in time. I know that question was sort of asked earlier, but. I just want to have some assurance. Is there a guarantee that we will get this done in time? In time, meaning to have free cash certified? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because I think that was already answered yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. I believe that's it. Uh, well, actually, there is one question. Sure. In our last town meeting, we talked about uh, $38 million of state aid for the high school and middle school, the possibility of that. Um, to reduce the cost of building the school from 96 to, you know, whatever minus 38 million is. And I'm wondering if that amount of money is at risk, because that would be a lot more than the 5 million mentioned earlier. So um, is there anyone who got, Mr. King, can you tell us, would the state aid for the, the, the school building be at risk? No. Thank you. Thank you. Good answer. Um, if you can speak next in line. Yeah. Ma'am? Yes, Carolyn Grosso, Village Way. Um, I have two questions for the treasurer. Uh, how long is this contract? Is it until everything is completed? Is there a timeline? And will the current treasurer be sitting alongside the uh, auditor? So your, your question is what defines the termination of the contract? Yes, what, it, what is the length of this contract? And, the, and then will the treasurer... Will the current treasurer be sitting alongside the auditor and learning what uh, he could, should... Could I put that, will, 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 the, will the auditing, will, will this process train the existing treasurer? Is that, yes. is that your question? Okay. In essence. Um, so can we get a, a definition of the, how would we know when the contract is, is terminated and, and will the... Uh, will this process result in training of the existing treasurer? There's an element of getting us up to date within 90 days, then there's an educational element, and then there's a monitoring element as well. So, uh, so it just doesn't happen and then he leaves. There's so, also the educational element and then a mentoring element. Okay, but, so is, is there, 
is there a defined endpoint to the contract, uh, or the, or the, the, the 65,000? Is there a defined endpoint to this process? Is that, is that your question? Am I accurately? Ma'am? No, uh, he's, he's saying that 90 days, we're paying 65,000 for 90 days of service. After everything is reconciled, after, after he reports and meets with the Department of Revenue and all the parties involved, after he implements new processes and procedures, and there's a, until his job is, is, is finished. Right? Well, I, I think what she's asking is, is for a better definition of his job, so we would know what, right. when, it is, when it is finished. And if there's not a good answer to that question, I mean, there is it, not. To but, me, it's, um, it's difficult to believe in 90 days our, this auditor company is going to reconcile 17 months. Sir, um, please, so uh, would you, it, what question would you like me to pass on at this point? Well, I, I, it's not been answered. I mean, is it so, 90 so, day contract or All right, well, that's, that's a different question. So. The, I can ask if it's a 90-day contract, but are, are you still looking for an answer to how, how will we know what the end point of this process is? Yes. Okay. Um, is there a concise answer to how we would know the end point of this process? The end point of the process will be um, when the pro proce pro procedures are documented and I'd have recommendations there and I'd give you that report. I, that I would can't be, hear you. Okay. Yeah. The end of the process will be after the bank accounts are reconciled, um, a report summarizing the processes and procedures is done with recommendations handed off to the town. That would be the end of the process. That would signify that it's, it's done. There's some steps in between that I can articulate, but Thank you. Satisfied with that answer? <laughs> Want to keep trying? Or? Yeah. Sir? Uh, Larry Rollins, Longwood Drive. I have a two-part question. I'm not sure to who to direct it to, so I'll just ask the question. How will the progress of the consultant be reported to the Westport taxpayers, and how, how often will the reports be issued? So how will the progress of the consultant be reported to the Westport right, taxpayers? Words, we, we, I, I would expect we would get progress reports. And you'd like and, to know how I, frequently? I don't know who they would go to. Okay. And, and secondly, how will, the, how will that information be passed along to the Westport taxpayers? Ms. Schufel? I want to be clear, the contract is between the um, consultant and the Board of Selectmen. So the treasurer is certainly involved, but the Board of Selectmen are the contracting authority. So the consultant will be reporting to the Board of Selectmen the process. I expect we'd have either monthly or every or at each of our meetings or once monthly um, reports from the consultant. Okay. Can I answer your question adequately? Yeah. Um, sir, I believe you are next. Uh, Robert Hill, Division Road. I'm not sure who to direct the question to. Was the outside accounting firm that the town uses asked to participate in the vetting process for the proposed consultant? And if no, why not? And if yes, do they concur with the recommendation? What, what, what is the outside accounting firm? Our outside accounting firm, Roselli Clark and Associates. Okay. Okay. Were they um, asked to participate in the, in vetting, the vetting of process the proposed of, the, of the consultant? Thank and you, if no, Mr. King. Why not? And if yes, do they concur? Mr. King, can you offer us an answer to that question? They were consulted. In fact, we asked our, our auditing firm to give us the names of, of recommended firms to send out the proposal, request for proposals, and the, the firm you have before you tonight uh, was among those that was recommended by our auditor. And they recommend any, any further question? 
and, and my last question is, and they recommended this over other possible, this, the proposed consultant over other possible consultants. Mr. In King? other words, they concur with your recommendation. Is they Mr. did. King? Mr. They King? did. Mr. King? Thank you. I'm going to ask you again to please be a model for the rest of the group in only directing and responding to questions through the moderator. Thanks. And, and Mr. Moderator, maybe to help answer that question too. Uh, I, I'm sorry, that it's been answered to, okay. the, to the speaker's satisfaction. Ms. Rouse? Yes. Um, my name's Karen Rouse. I'm the Vice Chair of the Finance Committee. We just want to clarify uh, the timing and related to free cash. Okay, can um, everyone hear her? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to clarify the timing in terms of free cash. Our, the consultant um, did indicate that he did believe that free cash would be certified at, in time for the annual town meeting. Uh, the finance committee believes that may not be the case. There's a number of things that need to happen for free cash to be certified. The first is the consultant coming in to take care of the 17 months worth of bank reconciliations. Once that is done after 90 days, then the financial auditors need to come in and do an audit. Only after the audit is done will we be able to submit to the Department of Revenue in a request for free cash. So the timing of all of those elements is unpredictable and out of our hands, and so we are not certain at the that it will be done by the town meeting. So we are reluctant to say yes to that. So just to clarify that. Thank you. And Mr. Valcourt was next to express interest. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to call the question. Thank you. So uh, a motion to call the question um, offers us an opportunity to decide whether we want to discuss this further or not. So we'll now take a vote on whether to continue discussion of the motion under Article 2. Um, a yes vote and this means that you have heard all the discussion that you need to hear and you're ready to vote yes or no on this motion. A no vote would mean you would like discussion to continue and you're not prepared to vote. So all those in favor of calling the question and stopping debate under Article 2 and proceeding to a vote on the question will please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. That is carried. Um, so we now move to a vote on Article 2. All those in favor of the motion under Article 2 will please say aye. Those opposed? That is carried. <laughs> Article 3, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or take from available funds a sum of $30,000 or any other amount to pay the cost of insurance deductibles for claims filed against the town and or taken into action relative thereto, sponsored by the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Carrera, will you offer some motion, please? Mr. Monterey, I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 to pay the cost of insurance deductibles for claims filed against the town. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. May I have the Finance Committee recommendation, please? The Finance Committee has voted to unanimously recommend Article 3. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor will please say aye. 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 Those opposed? That is carried unanimously. Article 4, to see if the town vote to appropriate the sum of $9,000 for the construction and repair of stormwater drainage from the Westport Elementary School presently dumping on adjacent private property at 783 Gifford Road and to determine whether this appropriation shall be raised and appropriated, transferred from available funds or by borrowing or otherwise, and or taken their action relative there, available thereto by petition. And will the petitioner please offer us a motion? Because you can simply step to, or, or you're going to be up here anyway. You step up to this microphone. Uh, William Anderson, uh, I move that the town um, raise an appropriate. Can everyone hear him? Okay, thank you. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of 9000 to be included for the study, evaluation, design, construction, or repair of stormwater drainage from the Westport Elementary School presently dumping on adjacent private property at 783 Gifford Road and other properties. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. May I have the Finance Committee recommendation? Mr. Moderator, the Finance Committee has voted to unanimously not recommend 
Article 4. Thank you. And we will have a presentation on Article 4. Problem, we have three, sorry. Problem is we have three storm drains engineered to empty onto private property. Uh, the properties are our property and neighbors and it also ends up going into the Westport River. This is a video of the uh, storm drainage coming out of one of the pipes I'm sorry that it's turned sideways, but I think you can still see uh, how it's flowing out of these pipes. They're 15 inches around. This is a layout of the elementary school. The lines that you see uh, in yellow coming off of the school are the drain lines that are pointed uh, at uh, the properties abutting the uh, elementary school. This is the stormwater coming down through my property in the back. Trees all falling over. Uh, you can see the rushing water, and these rainstorms are only maybe an inch, three quarters of an inch of uh, water for a total um, rainstorm. As you can see near the top there, that's the 15-inch pipe where uh, one of the lines that comes out from the elementary school. This is the second pipe. It's kind of buried in with rock and stuff, but it still has a lot of water coming out of it, as you can see. <coughs> this is it pooling down. We've been dealing with the town for at least a year and a half to try to get this corrected with no results. Uh, they keep telling us that it's not their pr problem, that they've been doing it for 40 years and they can continue to do it. But I think if this was your property or if I was draining on town property, they wouldn't put up with this and they would want it corrected as soon as possible. That's your last slide. Thank you. You're welcome to continue speaking. I just want to let you know that was your last slide. Is there any further discussion of the motion under Article 4? Mr. Vieira? Mr. Moderator, if I rise in support of this article, and I, I would like to, through you, Mr. Moderator, ask if the Board of Selectmen have taken a position on this now. I was understanding that they'd research this a bit more. Uh, Ms. Schufeld? The Board of Selectmen has been advised by Town Council not to comment on this matter. Okay, uh, Mr. Mothery, I rise in support of this article. I'm a member of the School Building Committee as well and had met the Andersons through that process or the previous speaker through that process, I should say, Mr. Moderator. And I do think that this is uh, something that the town should be addressing. Uh, we have an opportunity to do so um, through different options right now. One of them certainly could, could be through the school building process. Um, I, I know there's some opposition to that, and, and I respect the other point of view on that, but I do think that we should not uh, ignore this problem, and I think we have to take a responsibility as a town. There are a number of, of places on not only Gifford Road, but Old County Road who have been dealing with this going on close to 40 years now, and, and you know, it's a serious situation for them. Uh, the point where a number of town officials have viewed uh, this issue, and it's something that nobody wants to take legal action against a town, uh, this uh, previous speaker was uh, advised by uh, members of uh, elected officials that they, they should seek uh, an attorney. 
they're not interested, nor are the neighbors interested in doing that. They're just asking for some relief on this issue. And I would hope as a community we'd come together and support this. Uh, where the funds come from, there are other sources, the Finance Committee, the Selectmen, and others can debate that. But please, let's not have another special town meeting six months from now to deal with a court case that's been settled. I, I think this is not a good situation for our town, and I think that nobody's pointing the fingers. It, it is what it is, and it is an opportunity to solve this problem, and I hope that we can come together and vote on this. Um, the petitioner was given a, a period of, from Friday to Monday to get signatures, uh, over 100 signatures. In that short period of time, I think they collected something like 185 signatures. So there's, there's ground support for that. In the last week, I thought there was a, a plan to try to resolve this, especially after a planning board meeting on the 27th of, of uh, November, where the planning board to, to a, a member, uh, each member of that planning board spoke very passionately about, this is the time to address this issue. So I would hope town meeting would feel the same way in that they would vote in support of this so we can move this on. Uh, again, it's not pointing fingers, um, but it's something that we're aware of as a community. I don't think anybody living in our town would like to face this and deal with this. There's some personal issues that families have faced over the last few years about this. They're very, very passionate about it. Maybe they overspoke sometimes, but they, they had good intentions and they were trying to be respectful. But to suggest that as a taxpayer that our only recourse is to go to an attorney to solve the problem, we failed as a town. There ought to be other ways of solving this without having attorneys negotiate every step of the way. So I would hope and rise in support of this that people would give it a resounding support for it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Morton. Mr. Moderator, Hugh Morton. I'm a member of the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee voted unanimously to oppose this article. There are several reasons. One is that there's at least the prospect that something which will affect the drainage will come out of the school's construction project. It is not clear that is the case, but there are two possibilities. One is something is done and solves the problem. One is that something is done which makes the problem worse. And a third is that nothing is done and we still have the same problem. But under either event, the $9,000 figure apparently was plucked out of midair. There had been no engineering or other study of what would be done, how the money would be spent, other than possibly putting some gravel in the hole. We think, on behalf of the town, that the money is simply wasted under these circumstances, which does not mean after the construction is over with and we have a final resolution of what the drainage will be, that a solution could not then be affected when the balls are stopped bouncing. So we oppose this appropriation on the theory is simply a waste of money at this time. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Mr. Habib? My name is Michael Habib, and I live on Old County Road, and I stand in support of, I stand in support of Article 4. I've attended several meetings concerning the building of the new middle and high school, and, and the issue has been raised on multiple occasions, you know, as to whether or not that school plan will cure this problem. And, and the, my memory is that the, the, the current plan for the new school does not address this problem and there are no monies in that budget to take care of this particular situation. The new school, because of state law, is required to have no runoff onto neighbor's property. That evidently was not the law back when the elementary school was built or if it was the law back then, it was negligently done. No one here would want to have this happen to their property. $9,000 is a minimal amount of money. Maybe more money may be needed later on, but the process should be started to help these neighbors who pay taxes in town and are our neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Anderson? Um purpose of the $9,000 oh, we identify yourself please uh, Cynthia Anderson um, from Gifford Road and um, my husband and I are, are we put the article forward because we have had um, we have many meetings with um, the planning department and um, with the school department we were told to wait to see how the vote <laughs> would go for the um, for the new school and that maybe it could be address then and that any new drainage was not going to be a problem that <laughs> that they are obligated not to have extra drainage on 
onto abutting properties. And then we were told once that passed that, um, that to wait to see what the plan was going to be and to see how they can incorporate it. And in that time, we found out that these pipes and the engineering <laughs> from the previous um, building of um, the elementary school came, came to our property and um, uh, not to our property, you know, it doesn't like come right to the line. It comes, I think, within 80 feet of the property line. And there is no retention. There has been no maintenance of these lines. Um, and, and actually more and more drainage comes to them because of um, the addition of more parking and, and things. And there's also, um, in, in the newspapers, it did say that in the spring town meeting that there should be, that there might be more parking lots put up there um, for the elementary school. And so that's our concern, that there's added drainage and it keeps building up um, and it doesn't just come to our property. On our property, it's, it's 8.75 acres that are affected up there. And it comes down to the, um, to the wall of our property and it's, it's destroying trees. It has already washed away within the 40 years. It has done a lot of damage. It's taken a lot of the topsoil out, so now it's basically rerooting the trees and um, uprooting, uprooting trees and that because um, there's nothing for it to hold on to. We were told that, um, that, that, it that it would be looked into. There was, I think there was even a, a proposal from Jonathan Levy um, to have um, niche engineers look into the problem, but there was no response from that. And it was, I, th I think that was under, it was 8,000 some dollars um, and that to, to have that looked at by niche and they did not respond to that. Um, we, um, we were told to, um, to basically seek counsel and have them talk to town council. Um, we've gone that route. We're, we're adding up a bill that we were paying on top of taxes. When we were, um, when we bought the property, we were told, we tried to um, get an abatement from tax because it, they were charging us more than we <coughs> paid for the property and we were told that those were buildable lots. Well, they're in no way buildable lots as from the damage that the town has done to our property. It also flows down from our house and onto abutting properties of our neighbors. Um, and within the two weeks, we've had a neighbor <coughs> who's been flooded out um, on Gifford Road, and his property has been flooded out. It's gone through his um, septic, and it has, um, and from there, it goes right across the street, and, and it was flooding the street there. Um, and there's, and it was it's flooded out a pasture from, from the other side of the road, and then it directly goes into the Westport River. So it's not just our problem, it's a, it's a big problem. We all have septics, we all have wells down there and it's affecting our properties which cost us money directly out of our pockets to rectify that. If we could, we would take care of the problem ourselves because if we have to go to court, I think that probably would just probably add up to be about the same amount, but we aren't because we can't do that because it doesn't start on our property, it's directed at our property, but there's nothing we can do on our property to stop it. We could, well, no. Um, but the purpose is to, um, <laughs> for the health of neighboring properties, wells, and septic systems, that flow and what flows directly into the river. And it says um, many in town have drainage issues with their property. Um, a lot of people have drainage issues. I'm not denying that. People say that their pastures are flooded, they're, you know, their yards, they, they have problems with water. 30 but, seconds remaining. But on top of the drainage problems you might have with your property, think about three huge pipes directly coming onto your, directly draining onto your property from a huge, um, huge school system and then the added, uh, and the possibility of added drainage from the new and um, we just would like your support and for the health of the river. We don't plan on doing anything with that 8.5, but we would like to keep it to be a natural buffer. Your, your five minutes has expired. Can you wind up very quickly? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Support. Ms. Ryden. Uh, Tanya Ryden, um, 
certainly the pictures are compelling and I'm, I'm sympathetic to the cause and I think actually we've had a very, very wet fall and stormwater issues are gonna be become increasingly prevalent um, and problematic for, for many homeowners in town. Uh, I have a technical question. Uh, if this uh, article were to pass, to whom does the $9,000 go? Is it to a town department? I'm not sure who can answer that question. I, I think I can answer that, that if it's simply raised and appropriated without a department defined, it would be under the, the, um, the care of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Sir? My name is John Sharps. I live at 807 Gifford Road, a property adjacent to the library. For 48 years I've lived there, it's always been a pawn. We always had natural things. But now, since the school has been put up, I have been flooded out four times. I've called every authority in this town. They, uh, Planning board, everybody's been on my property looking where the well is. My well's 100 yards from where it is. My septic system is flooded every time that it rains, and it goes down to a ditch. The problem is there's no culvert there. I keep pe getting people, they've been down here, they plowed it out. They dug it up last week, and it still hasn't gone through. This would all be eliminated if you put a culvert there, but somehow it's never been done. And we get pictures, the town comes down, takes pictures of my land. The septic system's completely underground. My septic system's 20 feet from the road. Now, that's all I have to say. I just want to verify what Mrs. Anderson said, and I, we need help. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Barron? Yes, uh, my name is Charles Buzzy Barron. I'm a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, I'm confused about how uh, a vote in favor of this article is going to play out. Uh, it will give authority uh, to spend $9,000 apparently to work at uh, the construction and repair uh, of the stormwater drainage situation. Uh, but uh, although I would understand this if this were a legal claim being made against the town, uh, and in return for the money, we were getting some sort of waiver of any further claim in the future. I don't understand what comes from this situation. We could appropriate the $9,000 and then, of course, have uh, the claimants come back again for additional money um, after that. So I'm ready to vote against this, not because I don't think the town ought to feel responsibility uh, for water being poured onto somebody else's property. But I'd like to have a sense that there's going to be some sort of closure with respect to this that will give the claimants what they want uh, and that it will be settled uh, for the future. Thank you. Sir? My name is Tony Millam. I live at Drift Road. Uh, it seems like the, this article needs an amendment. Um, basically, what we've seen in these slides is a problem, but not a solution. And the Finance Committee uh, member who got up and spoke on this pointed that out, that there's no engineering solution for this. Uh, understanding that the town has a responsibility for damages that this water is doing to abutters, I would like to make a proposal to amend the article and strike the words, the construction and repair, and insert the words for engineering of a solution to stormwater drainage. <laughs> Can I interrupt you just a second? Ask Mr. Anderson, would you please bring forward the, your copy of the motion? Because I, 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 as you may have noticed, I, I tried to put the actual motion language for every other article up here. And a lot of things happened at the very last minute with this one, changes from their lawyer, changes. And so, unfortunately, no, would you bring that to me, please? Sure. Um, so I want to reread the motion, because the motion that we're discussing does not read exactly like the article.
Mr. Moderator? Mr. Moderator? Yes? If that's the case, why is the slide on the screen? Well, if you've been to town meeting for the last several years, um, I've always put the, I've always put the article up on the on the the uh, on the screen. But as I explained earlier, an article asks a question and a motion proposes an answer. I tried to improve that situation with this meeting by putting the motions up there in yellow print so you could see what you were actually voting on because we've never done that before. And as I said, I apologize that the motion wasn't ready for this. I scrambled to put a PowerPoint presentation together for the petitioners and to get a lot of things in order at the last minute, and it was not possible. I didn't get the motion language up here. So I will read it for you now. This is what the motion reads that we are discussing right now. I move the town raise an appropriate sum of $9,000 to be included for the study, evaluation, design, construction, or repair of storm water drainage from the Westport Elementary School presently dumping on adjacent private property at 783 Gifford Road and other properties. So the, the motion before us now proposes $9,000 for the study, evaluation, design, or construction. Point of information, Mr. Moderator? There's no such thing as a point of information. Mr. Moderator, with that yes. in mind, I re withdraw my uh, request for an amendment. Thank you, and I apologize that you had to go through that. Um, it was unavoidable. Thanks, can I, can I hang on to this? Unless you need this, I'm gonna hang on to it, right? Thanks. Um, Mr. Whiten, I believe you're next. Okay, my name is uh, Jim Whiten. I live on River Road. Uh, I am on the planning board, and I rise in opposition to this article, although I do support the applicants or the petitioners' uh, desire to f get this fixed. Uh, we have just had a, a meeting at the planning board on site plan review for the school systems on November 27th, and uh, a great deal of time was spent discussing this drainage issue and whether or not the school could be persuaded to uh, address this while they have heavy equipment and engineers uh, to be able to do this. Uh, my fear is that if this passes, uh, the $9,000 is wholly inadequate to complete the job that it is purporting to do. And I don't think that the petitioners will come out with anything more than they have now. Uh, I think that the building of the school should incorporate the redirection of these three pipes off of the elementary school as this is one town-owned site and with site plan review, uh, they should be required to contain the water the way that it should be. And I think that they have every ability to do it. They just have to figure out how. Uh, it is not a difficult engineering task. It is not a difficult uh, physical task to put the pipes in and redirect it to the stormwater attenuation that the school will be putting in for the new schools. It may cause the systems to be enlarged somewhat, but in the scheme of things, it's much, much cheaper than if we have to go back two years from now because they didn't do it and we still have this problem and we get sued and we have to do it. So I would vote against this. I think the $9,000 would be wasted I think the school building committee should address this as part of the new school system. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan? <laughs> Mr. Sullivan? Okay, I'm watching the clock. Second hand to get up there. But I had one question on the slide. It mentions Westport Elementary School, and we're talking at great length about all the construction that's going on. The kids are gonna be in the class at Westport Elementary School, so my question for uh, perhaps some of the previous speakers that referenced it, uh, is the stormwater coming from the Westport Middle School building? 
Um, is there someone who would like to answer that question? Mr. Vieira, can you answer No, it? it's coming thank from you. the elementary school. Okay, thank you. Ms. Sullivan? So in, in follow-up to that, as long as the water streams aren't passing through that middle school, uh, that was my concern. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vieira. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to clarify some discussion from previous speakers about the $9,000 figure in, in the, uh, the motion that you uh, appropriately read. Uh, I, I was on the understanding in the last week that there had been conversations from various boards uh, and the word 9,000 to be included, not to be the total amount, but to be included for um, design and for solution. I was also uh, in attendance at a uh, November 27th uh, planning board meeting where the uh, engineers uh, answered a question directly from planning board members and suggested that this would uh, be something that they could do um, and at least come up with a figure uh, so they could see what the design would be associated with it. Um, and I know there's a healthy disagreement and, and I think the people that are somewhat in opposition are trying to protect the interests of the town. I appreciate that. And, and I think the neighbors appreciate that. Their intention is not to make this a legal situation. The only reason there's an article on this warrant is because they've been closed, they've been actually sent out a meeting sometimes when they've tried to attend a meeting that they were told to attend because that was the appropriate forum to address their concern. There are some people that didn't speak tonight, some that are not in the audience, that, you know, health-wise, th th this has bothered them for a number of years. I don't know what, what other way we can as a community respond to this if we're not willing to, to bring this up. And I guess the article is a one way of doing it. Uh, I signed that petition. I, I really didn't want to do that because I didn't think that's what we should be doing. I think that there were town resources that should have been addressing this in, in different formats. I'm not suggesting the best solution but I definitely think this is a solution. And the motion that has pre presented the town meeting after my, and this is my, I, I wasn't there, but my understanding is that the town's attorney and the attorney representing um, the, the uh, petitioner had suggested this language as a way of coming to a, 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 an agreement to move forward to allow the selectmen, to allow the finance committee, to allow the school committee, to allow the school building committee to sit down and see if we can collectively come up with something that the planning board is asking us to do before they approve the site plan review. So I, I don't know why anybody would oppose this tonight. We're not suggesting, first of all, anything outside of if people are saying we have no money, if there's at least 9,000 that the town meeting has suggested, start with that and see if we can approach these other budget areas, whether it be a school committee operating budget, whether it be the operating budget for the, the selectmen, whether it be the operating budget for the school building committee, are there ways that we can gather resources to address this problem that, you know, we're talking about set, at least seven to ten homes that have been dealing with this for a number of times. It's a serious event. Anytime it rains, I, I guess people think I'm still a member of the selectmen because I get these calls and I go down there. They can't even cross uh, on Gifford Road. It's, it's, you know, it's flooding into the river. I mean, we're concerned about the river. We're concerned about habitat. Are we concerned about our population and our taxpayers? Come on. Uh, this is, why are we saying that it, we can't address this at town meeting? If we can't address it at town meeting, then tell the residents of the town where they can get addressed this. Does it have to be the legal system? We're going to pay attorneys on both sides to argue this? I don't understand that. I don't want to be potty to that. I think there's another way that we can come together in this. And I hope we vote in affirmative and support this tonight. Not on the article that's up there, but on the proposed motion to that article, which says 9,000 included in other sources. Elected officials can decide how best to deal with this, but we need to come to closure and come up with a plan. Every resident has said their intention is not to sue. Is their intention is not even to have an attorney on this. They're embarrassed about it. But they're also embarrassed because when they walk out of their yard, their septic system is over flooded. They're, they're, the wells are, are, are being contaminated. I've asked them to go to the Board of Health to address that. They don't want to cause problems for the town. They just want somebody to resolve it. They can't imagine that the town's not addressing it. Now they've got people that are pumping, in this last year, pumping out their cellars because of this. You know, around the clock. We've got people that are coming to the side of the wall with water going on. For the library, with, with the elementary school, you know, we, we failed in that design. And I, I think with the leadership now, with the site plan review, we're not going to fail again with the, with the new school because I think that there's going to be some participation in the process before we come to closure and what that actual design is going to be. But please, let's, let's not bicker about whatever amount's going to be, it's going to be a heck of a lot less than we have to fight this in court. And, and I can't imagine that, that we're, it, whether we win or lose in court, that we're going to be happy about it. Thank you. Ms. Lose, I believe you're next. 
<laughs> Mr. Moderator, I would like to ask a question uh, of the school building committee about what are their intentions as an alternative to this article? Would they undertake the responsibility to ensure that the plans that they are responsible for preparing and, and implementing would address this issue? Is there a representative of the school building committee who would volunteer to address that question? You're certainly not obligated to, but we would welcome that if you chose to. Mr. Moderator. Point of order. Uh, yes? We've already had discussion on which building is referenced. And, and the article clearly references the elementary school is causing the drainage, so. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, that's, that, that, that is not a point of order. The proceedings are not proceeding incorrectly. Um, but we don't seem to have a volunteer I'm for a response to that. I'm a member of the committee. Oh, okay, okay. Ms. Schufo, will you answer on behalf of the committee? The, I, I, other members of the committee can comment, but the school building committee was also advised by council not to comment on this matter. Okay, thank you. Um, and so I believe we are to Ms. Ryden. I think there was another member of the committee. Just I don't know if he was. Trying I'm to sorry. As long as the, as long as the, as long as the questioner is satisfied with the answer, with the, the, we were just asking for an answer to the question. Ms. Lowe, were you satisfied with your answer? The answer is that they've been advised by their attorney not to answer. Okay. Well, it's up. Ms. Lowe has the floor. It is up to her to decide whether that answer is satisfactory. If she wants to speak further, ask more. Yes. Um, she's asked if I would please direct a question to town council asking why they recommended to the school building committee that they not um, answer this. Mr. Eichmann, can you offer us that answer? Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr. Moderator, uh, John Eichmann, town council. Uh, the property owners have made a formal legal claim against the town. Uh, that claim is presently being evaluated, and while it is being evaluated, it is our recommendation that the town not discuss the legal issues involved. Thank you. Ms. Loss? My comment was not to deal with the legal issues. What I'm trying to address here is will the school building committee which has you know, nearly $100 million uh, in his hands, whether or not they could undertake on, the, on behalf of the town to try to find a way within their designs in order to address, at least begin to address some of these issues. Okay, well, and that, so you got a response from a member of the school committee that said, or of the school building committee, who said that the, the committee does not want to answer that um, now, you could direct that to another member of the school building committee if you thought you might get a different answer. Um, or, and also, if another member of the school building committee wants to offer a different answer, you're welcome to get in line to speak. Um, but it would now be Ms. Ryden's turn to speak. Um, Tanya Ryden, I'm not sure that... Um, I, I would direct through you, uh, perhaps, to the selectmen, um, sort of follow on my original question, and based on the follow-up discussion. If, uh, if the town meeting votes to approve this $9,000 for appropriation, it would go uh, be under the control of the Board of Selectmen, I, is what I understand. And my question is, can the Board of Selectmen, maybe they can't, based on the prior answers, um, indicate how they would uh, utilize that $9,000, would they um, uh, give it to the school building committee to address the issue as Ms. Los was trying to get at. Uh, so I don't know if you um, can answer that. I, I think I can tell you that they cannot give it, they cannot give it to the school building committee. Uh, town meeting appropriates funds to various entities and as it stands right now, we would be appropriating it to the, to the board of selectmen. So that part of your question I think I can answer. What was the, what was the other part? Uh, I guess then if the if it is appropriated to the board of selectmen, what would their plan for spending the money be? Uh, I'm not sure I, that, that it makes sense to pass that on because I can't imagine that they have already discussed that and voted on. Although I can ask them, if, have you decided on a plan for that? Should this pass? 
We Ms. have Schiffel? not. We have no comment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Gee, I believe. Constance Gee, River Road. I rise in opposition to this, not because I don't have incredible sympathy for um, the people that the petitioners, I have watched them at meeting after meeting beg um, the town to address this over the past year and a half and have been appalled, actually, at the way they've been treated. Um, I think this must be dealt with, but I think this is a, a bad precedent to set to, to set, to deal with it in this fashion. Again, $9,000 is not <coughs> going to fix this problem. I think it needs to be I think it needs to be dealt with by the school department and within the context of the school building committee. They, as a former uh, speaker uh, mentioned, uh, they have the equipment, they have the expertise, they have, in fact, sort of turned their back on their neighbors in this situation. Um, someone should be held accountable for this, and I think that's where the accountability should lie. And to come to town meeting and ask for $9,000 that we don't know what's happening with it, I think it's a bad precedent. Also, there's, there's other um, circumstances like this, probably all over town, with uh, municipal um, infrastructure that's pouring water onto people's property. So, um, you know, we have problems on River Road. So it could be a bad precedent and that, you know, there are a lot of people that would come here and say, hey, would you please do something? Again, this needs to be dealt with. I feel very bad for this neighborhood and these people, but I just think this is the wrong way to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, and I believe uh, Mr. Valcourt was, uh, no, I apologize, Mr. Mr. Carrero was next. Yes? I just had a, uh, three, through you, Mr. Murray, to the um, petitioner. Since the petitioner has put this through at town meeting, um, I'd like to hear from the petitioner once they have a study in hand, if this gets approved, what the next plan is. Uh, you, have a, you, have a, you have a study. That's basically what you have. Um, and there are other associated costs that come after a study. What is the plan after that study is, is done, if the town meeting approves tonight? What, what do you plan on doing with that study? Uh, All we're asking. Well, I'm sorry. Um, so you, you are asking of the petitioner what they're going to do with the study? Well the, well, the, well, the petitioner's asking for a study to be done. Well, that, well no, the, what the, the motion before us is to appropriate $9,000 for the study, evaluation, design, construction, or repair of stormwater drainage. So it would be up to the Board of Selectmen um, whether that is used for study, evaluation, design, construction, or used not at all, which is also their option. Um, I, so I, it wouldn't be up to the petitioner to determine how that was going to be utilized. Well, the petitioner develop the article develop the the um the motion the correct the article. That, right so in my mind the petitioner has some kind of um uh, game plan after this is approved to to uh, i mean just a study is just a study it's just it's it's not going to do anything i'm wondering from the petitioner what they envision to happen after this study is is developed and that's pure that's purely what the motion was it was it was to to, to, to obtain a study no, whether the, the, whether no the, the, the motion is to appropriate $9,000 for the study, evaluation, design, construction, or repair. So it could be used for any of those things, or as I said, the selectmen could opt to not use it at all, which is also their option, because the money will be appropriated to them. C could, we, could, could I ask, the, could, through you, Mr. Marty, could, I, could we ask the petitioner what they plan on this, what they plan once this is, if this, in fact, this gets approved. Let's say the selectmen approve this yeah. uh, through, the, through the budget process and we, and we we have a study in hand. What does the what does the petitioner want to see happen out there with a, with a study? Uh, I mean, uh, is not, that a fair question? Uh, well, if if you would like to answer that briefly, please do. I mean, I would assume your answer would be you want to get your stormwater situation exactly. rectified. Exactly. The, um, ever since, since but, 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 uh, although um, Mr. Carrero still has the floor, so okay. did, did what I summarize? Did I summarize what your answer would have been? So he, he would like to know, but briefly please, what you envision if this is passed and the selectmen opt to use it for a study? Correct. Okay. So right. if it passes, if the selectmen opt to use it for a study, what do you envision as a result of that? Briefly. Briefly. 
Um, that article was not proposed. That the article that's up there was not pro proposed by my husband or I or our lawyer. It was the, uh, lawyer, but, but, the one that my husband read was, and it said that the money could be appropriated for the study okay, of he's, the he's, but I, I realize this is an awkward question, and you don't have to answer it. But he's, his question is, if this, was, if this passes, and if the selectmen chose to spend it on a study, what do you envision being the outcome of that? I, I, would, I would think that there would be a positive plan that could alleviate the stormwater that is um, causing the damage. We're not asking for but damages. But again, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I have to ask you, you're now answering it. Mr. Carrero still has the floor. All right. You've been nice enough to offer to answer his question, right. which is great. But I'm gonna ask you to be fair so that you don't get his time, that you just answer the question, and then you're, you're in line to speak and you can continue that, okay. but if I understand it right, your answer would be that you envision a plan being in place that then is enacted or carried out to remedy your stormwater situation. Yes. Would that be accurate? Okay. Can I, may I comment, comment on that? Yes. The, um, and I, uh, I reiter reiterate what um, Mr. Morton said here on the Finance Committee. Uh, we heard the petitioners, we uh, sympathize with the petitioners, but there's, right at this moment there's not enough information to go forward with this. Um, I hear culverts and I hear 15 inch pipes. Uh, those are very expensive propositions for the town to, to even begin to um, remediate uh, in the short term. Uh, we, we had said that uh, we, we would like to look forward to the school building committee. Maybe we could work this out uh, in the short term or, or get the homeowners satisfied enough so that we can maybe appease them uh, so this doesn't go to legal action. Uh, that's exactly what was discussed at the finance committee, and we still are uh, opposed to this. Uh, Mr. Valcourt, you are, no, I apologize, Mr. Habib, you are next. Mr. Mr. Habib, you are next. Oh, you, you have already spoken? Then I'm sorry, then Mr. Valcourt would be next. Mr. Moderator, I would like to call the question. <laughs> okay, so once again, a, a motion to call the question is, um, gives the meeting an opportunity to decide whether we want to hear more discussion or if we have heard enough discussion and ready to proceed to a vote. So, a yes vote on the motion. Oh, was there a second to that? Okay. Um, uh, so a yes vote on a motion to call the question means you've heard as much discussion as you need to. You would like to proceed directly to a vote. A no vote means you would like discussion to continue. So all those in favor of calling the question and ending discussion on the motion under Article 4 will please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. That is carried. So we now move to a vote on the motion under Article 4. All those in favor will please raise their hands. Those opposed? May I have a couple of volunteer um, tellers, please? We're going to need to count. Can I get a couple more to make this go a little faster? <laughs> So um, our procedure for this is I'm going to ask all those in favor to raise their hand 
and please keep your hand raised until you get a clear indication from the teller that they have counted your vote. They will look at you and point to you. Do not lower your hand until you've been looked at, made clear eye contact, and pointed to. So all those in favor of the motion under Article 4 will please raise their hands. Um, let's see, Tom, you had this at, did you have those three peop the people at the back there? That was a week ago. Do you see those four back there? Now will those opposed please raise their hands and keep your hand raised until you get a clear signal that your vote has been counted. Mr. Schmidt, I see another hand up in your in your section that hasn't been counted. in your section, Hugh, whose, whose hand is, is still raised? The totals are 80 yes, 67 no. The motion is carried. Okay. Motion that, to adjourn. That, that, that completes our, our business. I may have a motion to dissolve the special town meeting. Move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? We are dissolved. Thank you very much.